नमस्कार टुडे वी शेल टॉक अबाउट महाव्रत वी स्टडीड अनुव्रत अर्लियर महाव्रत इज इन अ वे एन एडवांस फॉर्म ऑफ अनुव्रत अनुव्रत यू नो वी परमिटेड सम रिलैक्सेशन इन दी ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ वोज बट हियर इन महाव्रत देर इज नो सच रिलैक्सेशन दी वोज आर observed to in in a full way in a, to the full extent you know uh, and because this kind of practice is difficult for householders normally these are followed by ascetics monks you know or in other words the people who are desirous of uh, following mahavrat they will take diksha you know they will become monk they will renounce the household way of life so mahavratas are uh, <coughs> observed by ascetics in full way uh, without permitting any kind of transgression there are five mahavrats again and we start with ahinsa mahavrat the in this case now the ascetic does not harm even one sense being in the case of anuvrat Uh, the restrictions were on the thrust beings you know the beings which have two senses to five senses the sthavar jeev or the immobile jeevs have only sense of touch you know so all the ascetics takes care to see that uh, no being right from one sense being to five sense being is harmed by him uh this is a very difficult task to do you know for example an ascetic walks on foot he doesn't wear even shoes and when he is walking he looks ahead and takes care that he doesn't step on any insect on the ground so he is very careful in walking he doesn't walk on grass or any greenery for that matter you know uh and uh, even in uh, uh activities like placing things lifting things you know is careful to see that you know no uh, insect is killed or no harm is done to any living being uh it's a very very difficult kind of exercise uh then there is a satya mahavrat uh he doesn't tell lie in no case he will tell a lie you know he will always speak truth if you look into the causes of telling lie what are the causes uh, that a person speaks lie it is mainly because of patience of anger ego deceit and greed you know so the person who is uh, empowered by such patience you know he speaks uh, uh untruth because of certain reasons because of his self is interest a ascetic has no self is interest you know he is selfless person so he speaks truth he doesn't uh, lie in any case so he is tries to be free from this patience uh, passion in emotions like he doesn't have any greed because he doesn't uh, keep anything you know he has no fear he doesn't fear he is not afraid of anybody in the world for that matter you know and uh, he doesn't he doesn't have to deceive anybody you know why should he deceive because he doesn't need anything he uh, he possesses nothing he wants nothing you know so he is free of all these uh, emotions anger might be there to some extent and that also is tried to control he knows the technique how to control anger so uh, satya mahavrat is observed by an ascetic then astaya mahavrat you know uh, he observes uh, self imposed limitations on everything you know of course as i told you he has no possessions so the, of course the, that limitation is all automatically there but even in terms of begging you know 
uh, an ascetic has to depend on householders for food he doesn't make any uh, he, he doesn't have any occupation you know he doesn't earn money so for all his requirements like food and other things he is dependent on householders you know so he goes for begging and uh, in, even in this act of begging begging you know he is very careful and he is very choosy choosy in the sense that you know he doesn't like to have many kinds of dishes or many kinds of recipes you know uh, in his arms so he restricts uh, the number of recipes which is going to beg you know uh, he has uh, developed an apathy to test you know about which we are mad you know we want to eat this thing and that thing and so on for our own test an ascetic you know has uh, no uh, liking or disliking for, for for taste you know and he restricts the number of items uh, he restricts then he is very uh, particular about uh, the purity of food and drink you know it must not contain any living being or it must not be of uh, uh, life kind you know and he is also restricting the quantity of food it takes very little quantity it doesn't eat like us he takes very little food uh, now here i would like to tell you how uh, the food is taken by ascetics so there are two class of ascetics you know in jainism one is digambara tradition another is swetambara tradition i'll first tell you about the digambara ones you know the digambara saints live naked and they have nothing on their body and they keep only two things with them one is pichi pichi is uh, made of uh, peacock feathers uh, and uh, this is this acts like a broom you know so wherever he goes where if he places some object uh, on ground you know the first he will wipe the ground and then he'll put the thing the item there so he has a pichi and a kamandal a kamandal carries he carries water with him you know that is not for drinking that water is for washing hands and so on that's all so he keeps only these two things he has no vessel with him so how does he eat he eats you know in in the in a bowl which is formed by his palms like this so he'll make a sort of a bowl with his palms and he eats like this so thinks all the food items and drinks are poured in this bowl and he eats you know that's the way he eats so that you know he has to restrict then he also he restricts the uh, the quantity he restricts the quality he restricts the number of items and so on he is, he, he exercises restraint on his uh, test sense you know and uh, as far as uh, swetambar monks are concerned you know uh, they wear white clothes and uh, they carry they have some kind of vessels with them uh, which they use for bagging you know so they carry a kind of a carry bag made made of cotton cloth and uh, two or three vessels you know which are made of wood uh, some kind of uh, uh, small vessel you know so he goes for bagging and uh, the things which are offered to him are put in those vessels you know so he only two three vessels you know so and there are many varieties if he goes begging lot two three four houses you know every house will have a different kind of preparation which are offered but he doesn't have so many vessels so what he does he takes you know he keeps one vessel for say for example vegetables and curries you know so all the things are put in one vessel they are all mixed up you know now he doesn't bother about you know he is not worried about the taste the food is for body and not for taste you know so that way he he also limits the places where he will go for begging he will limit the number of recipes he will and he makes a choice you know he doesn't no monk eats green vegetable that's number one you know so they don't eat green vegetable they don't eat green fruits uh, and uh, they restrict the number of items in many other ways so uh, they follow 
aste anurad means means the number one that they don't ask for anything you know they don't ask for any kind of food or any any the right and they don't they don't take any item which is not given so aste is followed completely you know uh, they do need some more items you know sometimes you know they need uh, uh, let us say their specs are to be remade for example or uh, they need some kind of medicines sometimes but these are also offered by them they never ask for it you know so the householders take care of their requirements it is their duty to see that you know the monks are properly kept you know they they are properly fed and they are properly their requirements are properly met so this is the duty of the householders then they follow brahmacharya vrat mahavrat you know of course they don't marry this is uh, uh, not to be mentioned and uh, but they even don't think of any kind of a relationship with another person any kind of relationship for the matter no? they are detached completely detached so uh, uh, they they don't this doesn't come in their mind or any kind of relationship leaving aside the sexual relationship you know so they follow brahmacharya uh, fully then aparigraha mahavrat you know i told you they don't not have any possession you know they don't store things they don't store things you know nothing is stored not even food they take food only for one time and the next time they, they require they will go for begging again so they don't store anything in the with them you know and uh, no other possessions sometimes they do keep some scriptural texts this is the requirement so they have a pen and pencil and something to write on some paper and some uh, scriptural texts you know these are the things they keep with them and that's all uh, and as i told you the digambars will have only pichi and kamandal uh, the swetambar sadhus do not carry a pichi but they carry an oga oga is a kind of a broom stick you know it's a broom cotton broom attached to tied at, at one end of the stick you know so they carry that oga with them that serve the same purpose as pichi uh, they wipe the floor uh, before putting things there uh, all swetambar munis wear white clothes all female digambar sadhvis also wear white clothes you know then uh, besides the mahavratas I, i i i just now discuss about the five mahavratas they observe uh, mahavratas they have a austere life you know they have many ways of doing sadhana upasana and live a austere life you know so in this uh, sense you know they observe certain rules which i have just written there mention gupti samiti dharm anupreksha parishajya charitra these are uh, additional rules uh, these monks observe and i will not go into the details of these things but you see they are very careful uh, uh, with uh, regarding their activities with physically or mentally or verbally they are very careful in speaking they are very careful in their mental observations and their physical activities are very very limited uh, they don't uh, use let's say for example silk they don't use wool woolen clothes and whether it's winter or summer they will put up with whatever they have and the digambar sadhus you know have nothing on the body and they bear the cold they bear the heat and so on so this is a part of their conduct you know for equanimity of mind the ascetics has number one friendship with all creatures you know he is friendly to every creature not only human beings all animals or even insects you know he will never hurt an insect he will never hurt an animal uh, living you know of course there is no question of hurting a human being so he is friendly with all life forms you know then he uh, appreciation for the superior in you know, a promote 
So he always respects his superior. He gives due regards to his uh, superior and his seniors, you know. So the first thing in the morning he will do is, is to pay, go and pay his regards to his seniors, you know. And whenever he meets, he does it. Whenever he meets his senior, he will pay regards, you know. So this is the way of life they have there. And uh, they have sympathy for the afflicted, you know, the karuna. Uh, they are very compassionate people, you know. Uh, they have a compassion for every being, not only for their fellow monks, you know. Of course, the monks look after one another. Remember, if they live in groups, then it is their duty to see that the other people are happy or they are not suffering. If they are suffering, they help them. They help them the way they can, you know. So they take care of uh, the people who are living with them. Besides this, you know, they have also compassionate uh, views about other people. Even the people who are visiting them, their followers and so on, they will ask their well-being and try to help them uh, as far as they can. Because they are nothing with them, you know. So they can only advise, they can only uh, tell them, you know, what to do and what not to do in order to get rid of the problems they have in life. So, and then they are indifferent to unruly. Sometimes it so happens and that the people try to misbehave with sadhus, you know. They are very rare, but there are such incidents are there. So, uh, the, the sadhus never react to them, you know. They keep an indifferent attitude towards such people. Uh, and they are indifferent, the, the madhyastha bhav, you know. So they don't react. Even if you suppose somebody is, I am just taking an example, somebody is abusing a sadhu, or somebody is throwing a stone at sadhu, well, they just bear it, you know, they don't react it. And they don't want that that particular person should be harmed, you know. It's not a law and order situation with them. So they will excuse him, you know, and say that, okay, it is your ignorance, you are doing it, and that way they take it. So this I have discussed uh, in very brief the life of uh, uh, sadhus and monks and ascetics. <coughs> Those who want to go in details of it, you can some some details you'll find in my notes. Then we talk of uh, another phenomena or process which is very important: salekhana and santhara. This concerns death. Death is inevitable as we know, it will definitely come. How should we take the death? Uh, should we take it uh, as it comes or I should we be afraid of death? I mean, people like us are normally afraid of death, I mean, we are afraid of dying, you know, we don't want to die. Of course, nobody wants to die, that's a different thing, but we have a fear in our mind, you know, what will happen if I die, what will happen at the time of my death and so on. These kinds of fear are mainly because of two reasons. One, we love our body. We don't want to depart with our body, no. We love our body. So we think that you know, the body is a precious item, the body is a precious thing. Now I must have my body, knowing fully well that the body is going to go one day. But even then, we have that kind of feeling. And secondly, many people are worried, you know, what will happen after death where they will go, what kind of birth they will have and so on. So this is another fear, what will happen after death, you know. But uh, ascetics have no such fear, you know. They are not uh, afraid of death. They will take the death square, you know, come on. I am, this is body is not mine, they believe that, you know. The body is not mine and it goes, nothing goes. Uh, I, I, lose, I lose nothing, you know, if the body dies because the body is no, not mine, you know, this is the kind of feeling. And uh, uh, they uh, are not afraid of the afterlife also, uh, because they are doing so much of punya activity, and uh, it's almost sure that you know, they will have a good birth in the, in the next life, you know. But whatever it is, they don't desire for it. There is no desire. The desires are to be subdued, you know. Uh, so they have no desire about these things, you know. So they are fearless. In order that uh, the death is peaceful, 
in order that the death uh, takes place with equanimity, uh, there are certain procedures, you know, which have been uh, developed in uh, Jain tradition. You know. One of the thing is uh, Salekhana. Salekhana is preparation for death. So a monk, this is for uh, monks only, not for householders. So a monk will assess uh, his span of life and uh, he assesses how much time may be left, you know, and so on. So, when about 12 to 13 years are left, he takes additional vrat, known as a salekhna vrat. And this vrat, you know, is meant for two things. One, to weaken the body. So, body is weakened gradually uh, in the, over a period of 12 years. And how it is done, I will uh, explain to you. The another thing to drive out the patients, you know, the patients are the main enemies. So all uh, uh, monks and sadhus and sadhvis, you know, uh, of course they have very little patience as compared to us, but that also they try to over control, you know, they control over and they try to get rid of these things. So try to minimize these patients over the period of life which is left, you know. So during Salekhna, Two things are important. Number one, weakening of the body, and number two, weakening of the patience. You know, both go similarly. The, both are objectives of life uh, of this vrat. Now, how does the body is weakened? Say, body is strong because of food, so you reduce the food intake. So gradually, the food intake is reduced, you know, so that the the, this person feels energetic, but the body is weakened, you know. The two things different, you know. So even if the body becomes weak, he is energetic, you know, mentally. Mentally, not physically. He is physically, mentally alert. His, 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 his vitalities are uh, present, you know. So slowly the food is reduced in a systematic manner, you know. First, the number of items will be reduced, then the quantity will be reduced, then the solid food will be reduced, then the liquid feed, food will be reduced, then you know he keeps fasting, uh, he will take a daily, then he will take alternate days and so on. So there are prescribed ways of uh, observing this Salekhna Vrat. So he takes a Salekhna Vrat and observes it over 12 years and after 12 years normally death is uh, imminent but if it is not, if he has to wait for some more time, then also uh, then also is prepared and there are ways to take care of these eventualities you know, which we I am not going to go into those details. But uh, uh, he, he uh, normally uh, the period is uh, almost uh, over and then he reaches the time of his death. When the death is imminent, then he takes another work called Santhara. Santhara means you know, now no food of any kind, you know, all food is stopped. No food, no drink, nothing like this. So then he remains in that state, you know. And this state lasts for normally, uh, it may be few hours or few days. In some cases, it may be a few weeks also, but then if he is alive for that long period, he is taking nothing, no food, no drink, and he is still keeping alert, you know, uh, so that way. Santhara is also taken by householders, you know. When the death is imminent, uh, the Santhara was is uh, uh, taken by the person who is dying, and he also leaves food and drinks then, you know. It is only when the death is imminent, you know, in the case of householders. So that Santhara then may last for hours or days or normally. It doesn't go beyond that because you are able to assess that the life is no more and uh, the breath is taken. So I have described to you uh, all these things. Santhara is not suicide, you know. Salekhna is not suicide. Suicide is something different, you know. 
a person you can say that okay is taking he stop taking food and so is you know committed suicide no he is not committing suicide suicide and santhara or sanlekna is entirely different thing you know in case of suicide a person you know is under patience you know he is under agony and he commits suicide so he he suffers a lot during suicide you know whereas in the case of santhara you know he has a mental peace he is calm person he is inviting death you know he is inviting death himself you know so he take it he, he is at peace when he is dying he has a sense of equanimity a feeling of equanimity and he peacefully dies just leaves the body body is not his personal property is just leave it and the soul departs so there is a vast difference between suicide and santhara lastly i will talk about what is known as euthanasia you know in some countries not in our country uh, this practice this euthanasia is practice that is in cases where the person is very much ill and he cannot be cured <coughs> he is a uncurable disease you know is a terminal kind of illness which has and then he feels and there is no i i should not live you know there is no meaning of lean living because i cannot be cured and he is he is suffering is uh, suffering a lot as agony he is in agony you know so in that case uh, the government permits the the person also desires that he should be killed you know so it's known as a mercy killing in that case it's, it's again according to government religion otherwise suicide is not permitted in any tradition you know so either some lethal injection is administered and the person dies or his medical support health supports uh, are withdrawn you know so that he dies you know but you can see according to genuine suicide you know so genuine does not approve of euthanasia is suicide you know so i just described you today mahavrat how the mahavrat are followed by ascetics and the way the mahavrat is followed and i have uh, briefly discussed the vrat sallekhna and santhara with you thank you